China's foreign ministry says it is in touch with U.S. officials over the return of an American undersea drone, similar to the one seen here, which was seized by a Chinese vessel last week. The incident touched off a new round of U.S.-China tensions. WSJ reporter Paul Sony has been following this story all weekend and joins us now from Washington to discuss. Hi, Paul. This quickly escalated to a standoff between the U.S. and China, but you're hearing this is on its way to being resolved? Yeah, so it was sort of a 24-hour standoff, if that. Uh, the Pentagon had announced on Friday that this has occurred, and then by Saturday, the Pentagon had come out and said that they had reached an agreement with China to retrieve the drone, that China would be amenable to giving it back. Now, when and where will the drone be returned? Do we know? No, so we don't have any of the details on how it will be returned, when it will be returned, and what form it will be returned. Um, so initially, the Pentagon came out on Friday and demanded it back. Uh, then the Chinese government came out the following day on Saturday and said, you know, we kind of wish you hadn't made such a big deal out of this and we're happy to give it back. We were just kind of checking it. Um, and then Donald Trump, the president-elect, came out and said, well, we don't, e we don't even want it back. Um, but the Pentagon still stands by their desire to have it back, and so they are in negotiations now with Beijing on how to make that happen. Yeah, we're going to get to the president-elect's comments in just a second, but mm -hmm. the U.S. and China are at odds, correct, over the original purpose of the drone in the South China Sea? Is that right? Certainly, to some degree, their public statements are at odds. Um, the drone was a, it's an ocean of, the, the, it was a, the, the, basically what happened was there's an oceanographic survey ship um, a U.S. Navy ship that was going to retrieve two drones, um, and these drones are kind of, they, they swim underwater and they take salinity measurements and temperature measurements and ocean depth measurements. They can map, uh, they help map the sort of surface of the seabed. Um, and the U.S. ship was being shadowed by a Chinese warship, um, and it was going to pick up these two drones, which kind of operate autonomously for weeks or months on end, and then they're collected by the U.S. Navy ships. Um, and the U.S. Navy ship picked up one of the drones. They're about 10 feet long. They're these long, sort of yellow things. Um, and picked up the first one. And then as it went to go pick up the second one, the Chinese naval vessel uh, sort of went in and swooped it away and then uh, made off with it. Um, and so... Was there any explanation the, from the Chinese government as to why they took the drone? <laughs> Right. So the Chinese government came out and said they were worried that it posed a threat to freedom of navigation. They weren't sure what the object was, and they wanted to check it. Oh, I see. Um, but, you know, these objects have been around for a long time. Um, they've been, this isn't any sort of new technology. Um, but one thing that is happening is the tension in the South China Sea is getting more fraught. Um, and as China builds more artificial islands and reclaims more territory in that area, um, there's heightened tension. And on top of that, especially underwater, there's heightened tension. Um, Chinese are, are growing their um, submarine fleet. Their submarine fleet is becoming more aggressive. And that has also led to efforts on the U.S. side to make sure that their tracking technology and their sense of what's going on underwater in the area mm -hmm. is on point. But so this there drone... Is, there, the background to this, yeah. Sorry, but the drone wasn't even in contested waters, correct? It was outside of that area. Is that right? Yes. Although, yes, it was, from what we understand, it was outside contested waters, but China sees all of the South China Sea within the Nine Dash Line as its own territory. Right. Um, so while what the U.S. would consider international waters, China might not consider international Exactly. Waters. Now, of course, as you mentioned earlier, while the U.S. and China were trying to resolve this over the weekend, President-elect Donald Trump weighed in on Twitter, saying, first, China stole the drone from international waters, strong language, in an unprecedented act. And then, as you mentioned earlier, saying the Chinese should just keep it. But it seems the U.S. military would rather China not keep the drone, correct? Yeah, the U.S. military, I think, stands by their assertion that they want it back. The Chinese foreign ministry came out after uh, Donald Trump made those comments and said that the use of the word stealing was inappropriate. Um, and so there is a bit of a war of words here. But the backdrop to all of this is that we're seeing more tension between the U.S. and China going into this new administration. Um, as, you, as you know, uh, the president-elect made some comments about the status of Taiwan that irked Beijing um, last week. And so the... Paul, can you give us all a little... Washington. It, it, can you just give us all quickly a little refresher on the One China policy? Because that's being discussed a lot and it's being reassessed, apparently. But it's something that the U.S. has agreed to since 1979, correct? 
Yes, part of the recognition of China by the, U the part of part of the rec current recognition and diplomatic relations between the U.S. and China dates back to 1979, where essentially China sees Taiwan as a province of China, as a part of China, um, and uh, Taiwan uh, hasn't sort of declared independence as its own country, and it's sort of this gray area where um, we recognize we don't recognize Taiwan as an independent country with an independent embassy and an independent government, um, and that and that is sort of the bedrock of us recognizing. China and having diplomatic relations with China, mm -hmm. um, which were reestablished in 1979. And so the, the one China policy and our recognition of it is, in a sense, um, it's kind of the, the fundament of our whole relationship with Beijing dating back decades. Um, and what, what Donald Trump said is that we don't necessarily have to continue um, adhering to that policy and, and, uh, unless Beijing essentially concedes to certain U.S. interests on trade and uh, currency manipulation and other matters. Um, and for the Chinese, that's kind of, um, it's, a, it's, it's probably the most sensitive topic you could hit on, um, potentially undermining the idea that, uh, that, that, that there is peace in, in, in the strait there. Absolutely. Paul Sony, thank you so much for all of that insight. Yeah, thanks.